Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on 88.3 The Saint. I'm your host this week, Joe from Musa from the class of 2012. As you hear me say every week, as you hear our other hosts uh, say every week, the Saints and Alumni Show, while it's also available you know, on the iHeartRadio app, obviously right here on WBCR 88.3, it's also available as a podcast. So if you miss out on listening to any week's show, head to your Apple podcast, your Spotify podcast, open the app, search the Saints and Alumni Show. You will find this show and every show for the past probably year and a half on there, on demand, ready to listen. Some great guests, some great Siena uh, uh, members and Saints uh, hosting those shows as well. Everything about uh, Siena alumni and this show you can find on those podcasts. But today... We have a great guest with us today. Bruce Boyer from the class of 73 is here with us today. Bruce, thanks for taking some time out to chat with us today. Oh, no. Thank you, Joe, for uh, allowing me to be here. And when you said 2012 and now you say 1973. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I just just celebrated my um, 10th reunion, and uh, it was probably about a month before uh, reunion itself. I sat in my office. I'm like, wait. I turned to my diploma. I'm like, I graduated 10 years ago today. So it's, I mean, time flies. And I've only been at Siena for, you know, a couple of years, you know, after taking some time, uh, obviously, away from here in another career. Um, but I'm glad to be back here and welcome back to you. Welcome here back as well. to you. Uh, before we got started here, we were talking about um, uh, what the Siena experience means. And we pretty much ask every guest that comes on the show, uh, what does it mean to be a saint? And why do people come here to strengthen their Franciscan, you know, uh, the way of St. Francis? So we'll start with you. Uh, what does the Seton experience mean to you? And was it something that drew you here back in the late 60s, early 70s? No, I think it's a thing called life. Um, you know, you arrive at a place and uh, things unfold. The Franciscan mission, of course, is to help others. Uh, and, you know, you learn that along the way. But I actually ended up at um, Siena. My basketball coach in high school was Tom Amello. He lives uh, up in Saratoga. Okay. And uh, I was looking at Manhattan and a few other schools, and he said, you had to at least put Siena on the list. So I arrived at Siena for an interview. I was going to be an accounting major. They had just built Roger Bacon Hall, so okay. that shows you how old I am. <laughs> you said 10 years. <laughs> We're going to have our 50th year reunion. Uh, and they said, you know, you have some pretty good math scores. Why don't you become a math major instead? I know they were only trying to fill the building, but it worked. So I became a math major at Siena, joining the class of 73. Um, so we talk about, you know, we mentioned the mission of St. Francis and what this, what this school means in terms of, you know, giving to others, uh, going out of your way to make sure that, you know, we like to say people are treated with a more just, peaceable, and humane. Um, how has that mission in your eyes you know how how is sienna doing now in your eyes and keeping that mission alive well sienna is and uh, certainly the alumni and uh, you know i'm certainly uh, not a saint i appreciate the tagline that's been uh, put on uh, what we're doing here because there are a lot of people that are uh, supporting uh, the sure. program that we'll talk about in a minute but i would say thinking back on sienna the thing that surprised me the most was not just the campus but it was the community and how the community embraced Sienna students. So when I was here, uh, I started BB painting. Uh, we did painting and paper hanging. We had three painting crews that were going. And I cannot tell you the number of relationships, lifetime relationships, that have been built with very prominent people here. And I learned a lot about uh, giving back not only from my family, because that's how we grew up, because our job was to help other people, uh, but I can tell you the people in this community embraced the Sienna students, uh, wanted to make sure that everybody here was doing well. Uh, we're talking with Bruce Boyer from the class of 73. Uh, we, you mentioned your 50th reunion coming up nearly 50 years uh, since your graduation, um, and you mentioned a little bit about you know, what drew you to Siena? So if you're talking to, I mean, we're just welcoming a new class, class of 2026 uh, to Siena this semester. Um, if you were to speak to a prospective freshman, someone yeah. who's looking at Siena or potentially looking at, you know, a couple of the other schools you mentioned, 
uh, what is your message to them to potentially, you know, not necessarily sway, but, you know, tell them what Siena is all about? Yeah, I think uh, I, I would actually go back uh, on an example on how my life changed being at Siena, and I would connect it back to uh, the painting business sure. that I had here. I had the uh, good opportunity of uh, her name was Peg Williams. She uh, was head of HR for Department of Audit and Control. I didn't know what a math major really was going to do, mm-hmm. and if you're going to do research. She told me about the actuarial profession, uh, made arrangements for me to uh, work for the state of New York, which is where I began. And a lot of that um, happened because of Siena College being here and a professor, um, uh, Marty Anhauser, Father Anhauser, who was the head of the math department. So Siena is very unique. Uh, you can do anything you want uh, in an environment like this, but it's up to you to really get focused, which isn't always that easy on what are you going to do because you're just living. So you don't each and every day say, wow, what great things am I going to do? It doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. You just live your life and be a good person and be responsible for you and take care of other people to the degree that you can give back to the degree that you can. And giving back isn't just about money. Sure. It's about your time. It's about your smile when you're meeting somebody for the first time and you can tell somebody's having a bad day. Uh, and, and that's really what the CN environment for me really was all about. Plus you have, a great actuarial program here now, which we've learned. So you talked about career day. I was invited in 73. Wow. You know, first year out, sure. come back and talk about the actuarial profession, which I did. And there was a college professor here who hadn't heard about it, who ended up leaving a math professor and went to work for uh, the state of New York in the department, in the insurance department at that particular uh, point in time. So the message is, I mean, uh, you know, whatever you... When you look in a mirror, whatever you project in that mirror is what comes back at you. So if you're looking kind of sad and things are kind of gloomy, you know what? You're going to have a gloomy day. So whatever you have to do internally, just put forth that, um, that more positive image of you mm-hmm. and however you do that. And Sienna is a great environment that cultivates that. It's incredible the stories you tell about um, you know, what the school means to you, what the Sienna experience means to you. We hear a lot of the same stories um, on this show. Um, a, a few months back, I was speaking to a lot of uh, alumni ahead of reunion who were sharing very similar stories, and it's kind of incredible that you know I can attest to that. People I work with can attest to that. Other saints who, uh, other alumni who come through these doors can attest to that. Um, so you talk a little bit about you know your four years here and how it kind of shaped your career. Uh, you talk about coming to Career Day in seventy. Four seventy three. The year I graduated. <laughs> the year I graduated. Um, <laughs> it must have been hard up that year. <laughs> so briefly, kind of take us through. You know, obviously a little bit of ground to cover, but um, take us through. You know, in those few years after Siena, how did that experience? How did that experience really shape uh, what your career came to be? Uh, meeting the people that I met in this particular community uh, were very gracious with their time, with their advice. Uh, as I mentioned, how I ended up um, working for a few years uh, for the state of New York. Uh, those individuals, I still stay in touch with them sure. today, 50 years later, uh, those that are still with us. So it, it makes a difference connecting with people. And then uh, we talk about, you know, let's expand on that a little bit. So the, the experience of being a graduate and alumni of Siena, um, what does that say to, let's say, prospective employers out there? Um, from your experience, what are people when people see a Siena resume come across their desk? You know, what are people kind of getting from that resume? They see someone who's, oh, this is a fellow saint, or I know other fellow saints. Um, what sets them apart? Well, in this community, when you're in Albany, yeah, I mean, uh, more see, specifically Albany, let's yeah, say that, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, everybody stays in Albany. I mean, sure. And uh, some refer to it as small money. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's a term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. Uh, And that's not a discrediting term. Sure. It means it's a larger city, but everybody cares. So there's that inner feeling. So there is something unique uh, if you're graduating from Siena. And there's some families that multi-generations are here. Yeah. And that speaks for itself. I mean, in terms of uh, the degree and 
the caliber, not the caliber of the individual, because they come here with that. Sure. And this just helps focus individuals in terms of what they're doing. But it does make a difference. It's ironic because um, at, at our company, we do own a pension administration company. I am now chairman, but we have a new president and CEO. But in the actuarial field, two weeks ago, I just happened to be at a retirement luncheon, and this young man was there. And I said, where'd you go to school? He said, I went to Siena. I said, what'd you major in? He said, actuarial science. Oh, wow. I said, well, that's cra- crazy. I said, how many exams? He said, I had two exams when I got out of school, and I came to work. work for us. Wow. And, um, you know, uh, our new uh, CEO, Kirk Gravely, uh, was involved and hired him. I was not in the hiring change chain at that time, but I have to tell you, I reflected back on Peg Williams, who hired me uh, at the state of New York when Sienna really didn't know what actuarial sure. work was. And, and, you know, a lot of schools, I mean, it's a new profession or was at that time coming along. And it just, Gave me goosebumps to think about that connection. You talk about, you know, Smalbany, but also the Siena community that were spread across the world in itself can be small at times because of how close knit we are. And what you just said is a perfect example of that. You know, whether it's across the country, or whether it's, you know, two saints who happen to meet together someplace in California and get to work together, or it's here in this area or in the greater New York State area. Um, like I said before, you know, you're echoing a lot of stories that we've heard from a lot of different people. And it's great to hear that the that that saint spirit continues to live on. Um, Bruce, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we do have to hit a break real quick. Uh, but when we come back, I have this really awesome event on a flyer in front of me that everyone needs to know about. Um, if you're a fan of classic rock, but if you're also a fan of doing some good, there's some really cool stuff coming up in October. We're going to get right to that when we come back right here on 88.3 The Saint. Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on 88.3 The Saint. I'm your host this week, Joe Formosa from the class of 2012. Uh, Before we went to our break, I was mentioning uh, a really cool event that's coming up in October, Sock Out Cancer Benefit Concert. If you're in the Albany area, even if you're not in the Albany area, come on down to the Palace Theater on October 22nd. Something really cool is happening that night. Uh, if you're a fan of Boston, if you're a fan of Journey, Steve Jury from Journey, formerly of Journey, Frank Cosmo, formerly of Boston, uh, will be there performing that night for Sock Out Cancer. And Bruce Boyer is still here with us, uh, class of 73, uh, to talk all about what this concert means to him, what it means to our community, the state as a whole. Um, but let's go back a little bit. So uh, obviously we're talking a little bit about this uh, before we uh, – Got on the air today. Um, tell us about sock out cancer, or yeah, sock out cancer, and how it got started. Yeah, um, you know it's interesting, Joe, and it kind of ties into our first segment here on uh, making a difference. I actually, uh, starting in 2016, I was looking for a cause, believe it or not, that might just be a foundation that could unite our country. Just so you know where this was going. Mm-hmm. Um, I, we had talked to uh, Colonel Hesse up at the 10th Mountain Division about homeless vets and different things. And I realized that, and we do support homeless vets, but um, I was looking for a cause that everyone would say that makes sense. And the, and the way God does things at times. So we're out to dinner, we being my wife and myself, in uh, Binghamton, New York, uh, an individual who heads up the radio station uh, and the TV station happened to be there. And I am a pink tie guy, mm-hmm. support uh, cancer uh, research. And he came over and he said, hey, if we're going to do uh, something, uh, let's do it in Binghamton. Uh, and said to my wife, uh, did you know that we're going to do a pink tie event? And I were, I'm still a pink tie, so and I believe in uh, what the Baldwin Foundation is doing. And I had a chance recently to spend some time with Alex, wow. you know, just talking about yeah. things that are happening. But my wife said, if we're going to do something, why don't we do something more inclusive? Because not everybody's wearing as many ties. Or sure. maybe we should do something uh, a little bit different. And he said to her, what do you have in mind? And she said, how about socks? And that's how Sock Out Cancer began. That flash went off. 
And the, the concept, was, so let me just back up and not ramble sure. here. So Sock Out Cancer was created with a very specific mission in mind. First of all, it's all volunteer. I told you I believe in research. This is not about cancer research. This is about helping individuals sure. that unfortunately not only have cancer, but they have basic living expense needs. They might need food. They might need transportation to treatment. They might need a little help with the rent because of what they're going through. So it's taking care of the financial need, that part of the equation. Uh, the thing uh, that we have found, uh, all dollars stay local. We do it by zip code. So Sock Out Cancer has actually moved from 2017 to a point where this is not a one-time concert that we're doing. We have done these before. In fact, on June 5th of this year, the Senate and the Assembly passed a resolution uh, announcing June 5th uh, as Soccer uh, or Sock Out Cancer Awareness That's Day. That's right, yes. We picked that date because it's also Cancer Survivor Day. So uh, when we go into a community, what we do, and it's, uh, I said before, it's all volunteer, all dollars stay local. So Albany Med and St. Peter's uh, work closely with us in the Albany area. We do not distribute the dollars. We give the dollars to the foundations of the hospitals. And then we ask the hospitals to keep records, not that we want to know names, but they give away every dollar that we give them. Okay. So it's a, it's a powerful give back. And it fits right in the Franciscan mission in terms of uh, taking care of people. Because who doesn't want to feed people? Who doesn't want to help people that are suffering from uh, a disease like cancer? And that all happened at that dinner table that wow. night, and that's how this started. And it took us a couple of years to get it moving. Yeah. But uh, for those dollars, now we're in uh, six states and we're in multiple hospitals. Uh, you know, our current CEO of Security Mutual, who is the prime sponsor, but, uh, but Sock Out Cancer does have its own separate foundation, uh, but it is part of the Security Mutual Foundation, but it's all volunteer. Uh, and recently, uh, the Arizona Medical Association has uh, talked about adopting sock out cancer. We've had calls from the Huntsman Center in Utah that are going to be doing a baseball game for sock out cancer. So there's a lot of things happening, including the Dicks Open uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, professional golf is being introduced to uh, sock out cancer. So it is moving. So one of the things that we're doing uh, with the concert that, and thank you for uh, the great uh, plug on our two artists. So uh, we, we're connected with the Philip Myers Band out of Cincinnati, okay. Ohio. Philip uh, is up here. We're doing a press conference today uh, announcing that uh, at the Palace Theater on October 22nd at 8 o'clock, we are doing a concert. That particular concert will be uh, announced later uh, today. We have a 1 o'clock press conference. Uh, we, we have done the tickets such that... Uh, the tickets, we could charge a lot more for the tickets, but we actually want to fill the palace. And the reason we want to fill it is we want to connect everybody's head and heart because this is the issue that we were looking for when I was saying I was looking for a cause that could unite people because in our five years of moving forward with this, we have not had one complaint, not one complaint wow. or somebody saying, where what's happening, mm -hmm. what's going on, uh, and and we're pretty much a, an open book uh, with regard to the records, but I want to make it clear we support cancer research. Sure, but this is a different dimension of the fight of cancer. It's to help the individuals, and I'll tell you one story, since uh, we're in uh, Albany and small money yeah. here. <laughs> so I was actually uh, praying on what we should do with sock out cancer. Should we turn this over? Uh, we, you know, we support uh, the American Cancer Society. Uh, I was at Albany Med, and uh, I went down in the Adirondack uh, uh, Cancer Center with uh, the president of the foundation and the president of the hospital. And this was the morning I was trying to decide. I'd gone to a couple of hospitals on, should we keep this uh, separate as its own entity? And uh, we were in the cancer center, and this little uh, boy, five years old, I found out afterwards is walking by and he says, where's Moose? Where's Moose? And I looked at the, um, at the head of the foundation. I said, who's Moose? You couldn't have staged this. 
this little tyke is walking down. He's coming down, I found out afterwards, from Potsdam, New York. His parents are bringing him down for treatment. And he goes in, and there, there are two uh, beds in the Adirondack Center. One's a deer, one's a moose. He goes in, and he hugs moose. And he says, I'm here, moose. Wow. And he's going to be laying on that bed all day. Yeah. And I must tell you, I cried, you know, a little bit. Yeah. And I said, that, that's a sign we're going to make this as big as this can be. And that feeling, um, and it, it's, um, I want everybody who's listening to this to know that if you come to this particular concert that you just mentioned, the tickets are going to go on sale today. They're only $35. We could have done $70, $80 because the two individuals that are with the Philip Myers band that are going to be part of it, so it's a 10-piece band, each of these guys have their own guitarist. But Fran uh, Cosmos, he was uh, the lead singer of Boston yes. for 10 years. That's right. Yep. yep. And Steve Aguirre, the lead singer for eight years at Journey. They both, when they heard about Sock Out Cancer, said, we want to be part of it. So this is the first event. And what they're doing, they're actually doing a show in Syracuse, New York, on Thursday, Binghamton on Friday, and then we're coming here uh, the third night. Wow. To do uh, the show here. That's awesome. And all dollars stay local. And we've been uh, really fortunate. The Masri family, who are friends of Sienna, uh, uh, you know, through Tri-City sure, Rentals, yeah. you know, uh, they are uh, a major sponsor. We have a listing of sponsors that we're going to announce today. Uh, Security Mutual Insurance Company is also a major sponsor. And the reason I'm mentioning that is this event has been covered. So when you're paying $35 for a ticket to come to the show, not only are you going to have one heck of a good time, but your $35 is going to split equally between the two hospitals, Albany Med and St. Peter's. Okay. So what greater gift could you give than come and have some fun? But the biggest gift that you're going to receive is when you come to the concert, because we've given cancer patients tickets through the foundations. Yeah. We're giving them those tickets today because they don't have the opportunity to have nights out. So we're going to have a special section and we've done this before a night out for the cancer patients. And when you see them and you see their energy with what strength they have, their energy, you, you will be, you, you will be breathless when uh, you see the chemistry of what's going on at this particular concert. And, um, you know, we did, uh, the earth harp here, a couple of years ago, and that was uh, sensational. These two guys um, are, are knights now of sock out cancer, and they're building this show to take around the country because, as I said, we're now in six states and various locations, and we need, I, I want to electrify the people that are listening so we can get U.S. saints to be out there to carry the message because we're an all-volunteer group, and I need we need sure. more volunteers to help carry the message across this great country. And if you're familiar with the history of Boston or Journey, you know, over the course of their time, you know, as members have come and gone, you are familiar with these two guys. I mean, Steve Argeri came in, I believe, in like the 90s and obviously took it for, I think you were saying, about eight to ten years. Um, just, just that name popped out. I'm like, wow, that is a great get for this type of event. Um, and again, if you're a fan of either of these two bands, you know who they are. Um, Bruce, we do have a couple minutes left. If people want to buy tickets, and they should, because the stories you've told and the, the purpose of what this event is and what it does really emulates like what we've talked about uh, time and time again on this show, uh, what it means to be a Franciscan and spreading the Franciscan mission. Where can people get tickets? Yeah, well, these tickets will be going on sale uh, at Ticketmaster later today um, but uh, if you run a business uh, you can uh, reach out to us directly all you have to do is go out on uh, sockoutcancer.org and you'll find us if you just google sock out cancer uh, we're out there um, and we can connect with you and i said employer because maybe you want to purchase groups of tickets for sure. your employees and we can make arrangements for you to do that um, and if you're large enough uh, and you need some some extra help uh, we can help you uh, in a lot of different ways on marketing the tickets. Uh, real quick plug, if Bruce's story sounds familiar to you, 
And if you're a follower of the Siena Annual Fund Instagram, we featured Bruce and Sock Out Cancer last year. Uh, you're hearing a lot of the same, but if you want to dig a little deeper into what Bruce does and what Sock Out Cancer is all about, um, head to the Siena Annual Fund Instagram page. Just got to scroll a little bit, but uh, I believe it was last August we featured you. Uh, we thank you for uh, agreeing to be featured then, and we thank you for coming on today. This is a great event. I, I know I will be there because this is, this is something I know I can't miss. Uh, Bruce Boyer from the class of 73, thank you so much again for coming on today. This is great. I hope people come out. I hope people support because this is a great mission and a great cause. Yeah, and I uh, absolutely want to thank you, Joe, for the time of course. for us getting this message out. And I, I want to take the limelight off me because this is no longer just about me. We have an army of volunteers that are out there, and uh, we're, uh, we're being blessed uh, with the uh, things that are happening and if you could listen to one of these cancer patients and the notes that they send saying, we didn't think that anybody really cared, just thank you for caring. It is, it is so powerful. And I hope that everyone who's listening will have that same experience because you can become Knights of Sock Out Cancer. Take your first step, buy a ticket, have a lot of fun, come to the show. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to buy more than one because you don't want to come along. <laughs> of course. You want to share that fun. Bruce, thank you again. Uh, once again, SockOutCancer.org is the website. Tickets are also on sale at Ticketmaster. Uh, that's it for this week's episode of the Saints and Alumni Show. Uh, I want to thank once again Bruce Boyer from the Class of 73. I am Joe Formosa, Class of 2012. Stay with us. 88.3 The Saint. We'll be right back.